Dr. Felucia. I'm a licensed psychologist, and today I'm going to be talking to you about different ways in which therapists can actually invalidate your experience. If you want to learn more about what I'm talking about, there's another video I have on gaslighting. And basically, this is a form of emotional manipulation in which somebody tries to get you to deny the reality or question the reality of what you are experiencing. And so if you want to learn more about that, um, I would recommend going back to the video that I have on what is gaslighting. Unfortunately, in the helping professions with medicine, with therapy, you can encounter um, a professional who will engage in similar types of behavior. Um, sometimes it can be out of ignorance, it can be out of lack of training, and sometimes, unfortunately, it could be due to more, um, you know, sinister issues with them. And so I want to make this video so that you can be aware of this if it's going on with you in a therapy session and help you find um, a way to recognize it and combat it. And so I'm going to talk about ways in which therapists can actually gaslight their clients or invalidate their experience. One way in which this can happen is um, the therapist getting you to question the reality of what you said. Now, um, you know, sometimes people are not going to be truthful with a therapist for whatever reason, but when you feel like your therapist is trying to make you change your mind about something, that's not good therapy. I'll give you an example. Let's say somebody is in the therapy session and they're talking about how their child's father um, does not feed the child regularly, right? Um, a, a, a good and competent therapist would want to understand more about that, look into possible abuse, but a therapist who is invalidating, or in this case, gaslighting the client would say, really? Are you, do you mean to tell me that your child's father doesn't feed them at all? Are you trying to tell me that they're the worst dad in the world because they, you know, forgot to feed them a couple times or were late with their meals? And going about it in that way is, um, first of all, very humiliating for the client. And the therapist is assuming that, the, that um, the client is not being truthful. In reality, there are people who are in jail for this very type of thing. And so it's the therapist's job to listen and try and understand where the client's coming from and then help them problem solve to what to do in the situation. So if you see what the therapist did, um, they said something along the lines of, are they the worst father in the world because they forgot to feed them a couple meals or things like that. And that's not what the, um, the client is saying. They're really bringing up um, an issue that could be serious. And so a therapist could ask clarifying questions, but not make the assumption that the child's father is doing something that's harmless. So that's one way um, in which a therapist can be um, invalidating, or in this case, gaslighting. And as you can see, the person in that situation is probably going to start thinking, well, am I right about this? Did I assess the situation um, accurately? And they're not going to be able to feel like they can trust a therapist. Um, so the second way this which can occur is when the therapist overly sides with somebody else in perhaps a conflict or a situation. So let me give you an example. Let's say um, somebody is talking about a situation, um, an adult client is talking about their situation with their um, elderly parents who are, you know, verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, whatever the case may be, but they're, it's, it's not um, a good and healthy situation. They have, um, you know, a toxic family dynamic. The client in this case might talk about you know, what they've experienced in their childhood, what they're experiencing with um, their aging parents. And um, a good and competent therapist would try to understand and advocate for the client's health and well-being. They're not their parents' therapist, they're the client's therapist. But an invalidating client or an invalidating therapist rather would make excuses for the um, parents in this situation under the guise of taking their perspective. So I'll, you know, so they might say something like, well, you know, they're getting up in age, you know, maybe they're just cranky, you know, older people forget things sometimes. So you have to realize all the sacrifices they've made for you and try to be less sensitive about it. And so while it is true that older people 
may forget things or may have their own emotional issues, the, the role of the therapist in this case is to advocate for the client's well-being, help them to see that it is not okay that they're experiencing verbal and emotional abuse um, or any kind of dysfunction in their relationship and help them problem solve and figure out ways out of it. But before they even do that, the goal is to validate their experience, you know, and show, um, you know, just to show the concern and help them understand that, no, this is not healthy. I can understand how it's affecting you. How do we move forward from this? But again, the therapist's job is to advocate for and support the client. So um, this is, so that's, that's one way um, that, that an, uh, the therapist can do this. Um, and then there's some other ways as well. You know, if we think about, um, you know, there, there are certain things that, they, they, these are some more kind of, um, I would say blatant examples, but there are certain phrases that therapists can use that can be rather invalidating too that you would need to be um, um, aware of. So things like, uh, well, are you sure that happened? Or gosh, I think you might be, being way too sensitive about this, or um, let me see, think of some other ones. Um, taking, you know, making assumptions that are not really, that are not really grounded in the client's reality. So for instance, um, you know, um, a man might be coming into a therapy session um, to see his, his, um, his therapist, and he might be talking about how, you know, he married his high school sweetheart, uh, they've been together for decades and, you know, they're, you know, by all intents and purposes look like a picture perfect couple, but they're, but he's really experiencing a lot of unhappiness and um, is thinking about leaving the marriage for several reasons. Well, the job of the therapist is to help them process through those emotions and come to, um, you know, and, and come to a, a, a conclusion about what, how he wants to address the problem. But an invalidating therapist or someone who's even gaslighting might say, well, are you sure you're not happy in this marriage? I mean, from all, in, you know, from everything you've talked about, you're the picture perfect couple, you know, maybe you just need to um, go on vacation or um, do X, Y, and Z, and they're not getting to the root of the problem. And so again, in this situation, the man who's coming in is having some real doubts about his marriage and how, instead of being helped to process through those doubts, he's being conveyed the message that his perception and his unhappiness in his marriage is not grounded in anything. Now, you know, maybe the unhappiness could be due to several other factors, but the way the therapist is going about this is not helpful. And it's actually um, weakening the connection and the ability for the client to be able to trust the therapist. So that's, um, you know, that is, that is a really important way for you to recognize whether you're in this kind of situation or not. Do you feel like your therapist is listening to you and supporting you? Your therapist doesn't have to agree at all with your conclusions or your perceptions, but their job is to validate it, help you process it, and help you get to solutions and help you develop skills to deal with whatever it is that you are struggling with in this situation. And so, um, and so another way that this can happen too is just by um, assuming how you will feel or how you should feel. So telling somebody, well, you should feel this way or you should think this way or this is what you know I would do if I were you. And again, sometimes these may be helpful in a different form, you know, helping a client develop emotional resilience and helping them say or helping them realize that they can achieve certain emotional goals is a great way to help your client in therapy. Um, but, you know, help a client in therapy. But if the, the therapist is just imposing their own view, their own um, perspective and opinion regularly, it doesn't help the, cl the client develop their own autonomy and their own voice. Okay, so that's really important. And, um, you know, when people, um, you know, or in a therapy situation when they're experiencing experiencing this, there's a lot of shame. There's a lot of questioning about, well, am I seeing things the right way? And so that is, um, so that that's a way to watch out for this. Now, what can you do if you're in a situation like this? Um, you know, one of the first things you can do is just speak up for yourself and be assertive. So you can say something like, you know, I understand in the, in the case with the um, client with um, verbally abusive um, older parents you know, they could speak up for themselves as the client and say, well, you know, 
while older people may have their own issues. In this case, I'm being um, harmed here. You know, I don't like the dynamic that's going on in my family. And what I'm looking to you as a therapist is to help me, you know, is to validate my, my experience here and help me solve problems and help me understand how to manage this situation effectively and really see things from my point of view. Um, anytime people are in challenging relationships with other people, we can't do their inner work or their process of healing and, um, and rehabilitation for them. So anytime you're sitting in a therapy room, your the therapist's job is to help you, not help whoever it is that is on the other side of the conflict. And it doesn't mean they have to side with you and say that you are absolutely in the right and the other person is in the wrong, but it's their job to advocate for you and whatnot. So I would I recommend speaking up. Um, sometimes when therapists make mistakes like this, it may be due to um, you know, just incompetence, not realizing certain things or having their own issues get in the way. And that's a great reminder and a great wake up call for a therapist in a situation. However, you have to judge the situation and see what it is like for you and whether you feel like you have the strength to do that or whether it's worth it. Another thing is to simply just find another therapist. But it's important that you have these things in the back of your mind because when there's a power differential, and I talked about this in my video on gaslighting, um, it's hard to speak up. You know, We assume that whenever we go to somebody for help, whether it's um, a spiritual leader whether it's um, you know, a medical professional or a mental health professional that number one, they're the expert and number two, they have our best interests in mind. And unfortunately that is not always the case. I would recommend going to it with um, a neutral mindset and let that professional earn your trust over time. Obviously do your homework and your research, but understand and, and watch yourself for um, just giving them all these passes and, and thinking all these um, you know, beneficial and positive things about them without having them actually earned it and shown it to you through their actions. I hope this helps. If you have any other questions, comments, um, please leave them in the leave them down below. Um, and then if you also find these videos helpful, subscribe. And I'd also love to hear your opinions about what some other topics would be that you would like to see in future videos. May you have a peaceful and wonderful day. Bye-bye.